What's up guys? So today we're going to do a comparison video between two daily trainer running shoes that may be budget friendly for all of you out there. So today we're going to talk about the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 versus the Nike Windflow 9. Which one would I pick between these two shoes? Stay tuned and check out the video. But before we get into this guys, if you wouldn't mind, please going below and clicking that subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications on when new content drops. And at the end of this video, if you enjoyed the content, please uh, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your running buddies. Very much appreciated. Thank you very much. And let's get into it. So these two shoes are, in my opinion, kind of budget daily trainers. Both are extremely popular uh, running shoes. I would say maybe in line more with the Pegasus on this one, but I'm doing this because a lot of people have interest in the Windflow, and on paper, the Windflow is very, very intriguing. And I figured this video might work for some of you out there, maybe deciding between, can I get the Velocity Nitro 2 at a discounted rate, or do I go ahead and pick up the Nike Windflow 9? So. We're going to kind of get into the two shoes, how I like both of them. Now, let's start with the uppers first between the two shoes. Um, so the Puma, I think, has a little bit better quality upper, if I do say so myself. It does have a gusseted tongue. It does have a really nice padded heel collar here. Um, a little bit more padding than what you get on the Windflow. Uh, also, just the materials that they're using here in the Puma just seems like it's a little bit better, a little bit higher quality. That being said, the breathability I'm going to have to give to the Windflow. I think the Windflow has a little bit better breathability with that transparent mesh that's in that forefoot. Uh, it doesn't feel like it has that booty construction on the inside. Yeah, it doesn't have that booty construction on the inside like the Puma does. So the Puma has a more kind of luxurious kind of feel to it where the Nike feels like a stripped down daily trainer. Uh, so for that, um, breathability wise, I'm gonna give to the Nike. Comfort wise, I'm gonna give to the Puma. Now the overall lockdown of these shoes, neither shoe actually wows me better than the other, but I am gonna slightly give the edge to the Nike because it does use an internal, even though it's not a gusseted tongue, it does have internal kind of lateral and medial uh, fabric on the inside here. That orange that you see right here is like an internal fabric that is attached to the lace loop system that provides a pretty good lockdown. And that's something that I don't really feel in the Puma. So I do have to say that I feel like the lockdown uh, goes to the Nike. Uh, overall comfort score, definitely the... Uh, with the Velocity 2 wins that battle for overall comfort. Um, so overall upper, I would kind of lean in the direction of the Windflow 9. Even though the quality of the materials aren't as good, I do feel like that the, the way that this is designed and kind of put together definitely feels a little bit more daily trainer, uh, feels a little bit better over the foot. Overall, I feel like this just fits the role of a daily trainer a little bit better. Now, moving on to the midsole, uh, let's start with the Nike first because this is using a slightly older technology. Now you do have Nike Air, full length Nike Air unit in the midsole. You've got this Nike Cushlon Plus, Plus, which is an updated version of Nike Cushlon, which they used to use in the Nike Pegasus 34, 35, 36, as well as some other shoes. Uh, so it's been relegated down the chain as it's become an older kind of uh, foam. Uh, and it's good. It's, it's solid. Um, it has a really nice cushion to it. If you're looking for something that's soft underfoot uh, and still has that kind of cushion, that rebound from the Nike Air unit, you're going to really enjoy what this shoe has to offer for you. Now, if you're looking for something that I think is a little bit more versatile, I really think you're going to like the Puma a little bit better. That nitrogen infused foam, which is one of their super critical foams. It's not their elite super critical foam, but it is a foam that has very same properties of their elite foam where it's got a really high amount of cushion and energy return. I think you're really gonna like this shoe. It's, it's not only a smooth ride, 
but even when you're starting to do some of those faster paced efforts is when the shoe really comes alive. It has a really nice bounce to it, a really good energy return. It becomes super fun to run in when you start picking up that pace. So if you're looking at it from that point, I would definitely look, say that the midsole in the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 is definitely better than what is in the Nike Windflow 9. Now going on to the outsole here, I normally would call this a tie because I really feel like both shoes have really good traction, really good covered outsoles. Uh, just an overall, like you're going to feel positive in either shoe that you decide to run in. But I'm gonna have to give the win to the Puma for that Puma grip outsole, which is just fantastic in just about anything that you could throw at it, uh, as well as the rubber coverage that's on there. Just feels really good, feels great underfoot. Uh, really feels confident in gravel and grass and wet conditions. It's just a fantastic running shoe. Um, not that you couldn't do that in this, but I think the durability of Puma Grip is a little bit better than whatever this uh, outsole rubber Nike is using on the Windflow. So I really feel like the Puma is going to be your best bet. Now, how have I been running in these two shoes? Just both have been classic daily trainers kind of use them for some faster pace efforts and some intervals here and there. I really feel like the Puma is kind of the more versatile running shoe, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit softer underfoot, I think the Windflow is going to be your best bet um, between the two shoes. Now, both shoes, longevity-wise, uh, as far as how long you can run, I think I've said this in both videos, uh, both shoes are kind of in that four to seven mile range. Like somewhere in there is really about the max that you'd want to take either one of these shoes. I feel like there's a little bit more resiliency in the Puma as far as its midsole foam over that long run than you get here in the Windflow. The Windflow after about five miles, you'll start to notice that the midsole is fatiguing and not really coming back or rebounding as 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 good as it was at the beginning of the run and that's when you start to see that decline maybe in performance maybe in comfort where this stays pretty consistent until you get to about that seven mile mark and then after that i think it's more of your body that is asking for a little bit more cushioning maybe a little bit better you know just for that longer effort and that's where you want to go with a more higher stack shoe I can see for some runners that this could go up to about 10 miles and still be very comfortable. It's still very resilient, but after a while you're just aching for a little bit more out of it. But between the two shoes, to me, somewhere in between that four to seven mile range is about the wheelhouse for either one of these shoes. So I think, you know, distance wise, you're going to get about equal on these shoes. Now value wise, $120 for the Velocity Nitro 2. You got $100 for the Windflow. So at that point, you kind of have to give it to the Windflow. The other thing is the Windflow is consistently on sale somewhere. Uh, if you search the web, whether it's direct from Nike or from other shoe retailers, you can find the shoe for about 60 bucks, 50, 60 dollars for this shoe. Where the Puma, if you have a discount code, typically it's only about 20% if you use a discount code. So you can get it for maybe just under a hundred bucks, but it's not going to be close to what you can get in the value of the Windflow. So for value, I gotta go with the Windflow 9 on this one. Overall, if I had to pick between the two shoes, between the, the Puma and the Windflow, I know this might shock Either, you know, either party out there, but I actually would prefer the Windflow over the Velocity 2. And I love the Velocity 1, but I prefer just for daily mileage, I prefer the Windflow. Now, again, if I'm doing faster efforts, if I have one shoe, I'm going to go with the Puma because I can do faster efforts in this and it's still very good. But... For me, just as a daily trainer that's just going to eat up 60, 70, 80% of my miles per week, I'm, I'm going to go with the Windflow on it um, over the, the Puma. I just feel like the Windflow just kind of fits a little bit better. So um, that might not answer anything for you guys. So I apologize if you went through this whole video and found out, well, that didn't answer anything for me. Um, but I, I feel like the Windflow might be the better value, especially if you can pick this up on a discount for, I don't know, 60, 50, 60 bucks. 
I think that's definitely a really good value for this shoe versus the Puma. So if you guys have either one of these shoes, uh, leave your comment. How are you getting on with these shoes? Uh, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, let us know how you like them. How do they work for you? What mileage do you put in? Where are you? Where's your wheelhouse, right? Are you guys like in the same boat? Yeah, four to seven miles, or have you taken this longer and still been good? I'd love to hear, and I'm sure everybody else would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. As always, guys, uh, never pay full price for running shoes, and as always, enjoy the run.